welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's show is a brand new author by the name of Silent Urge 6, and with a devilish dogman adventure that I know you can all sink your teeth into. But as ever, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. And title. Warning. Call. Cool. Let's get straight into that. The sun was slowly creeping over the horizon. Fresh morning dew on the grass, and the birds singing their songs. A gentle wind blowing through the trees. He let out a long yawn. The air was thick with the smell of the remains from last night's kill. The odour of blood still in the air. He stood up from his comfortable spot under the tall oak tree. He took a small step forward and shook from side to side. As water and mud flew from his sleek black fur. He began walking away from his resting place towards the stream, not twenty-five feet away. And as he was approaching the stream, he hears a howl. His alpha sending out his call to come home. And he ignored the call, as he enjoyed being on his own. After all, he was a formidable predator, standing at an astonishing nine feet tall, big broad shoulders, a muscle-toned chest, a slender yet toned abdomen. Strong, powerful legs and arms made him the perfect killer, both powerful and agile. His sharp four-and-a-half-inch claws glistened in the sunlight, and his mouth full of razor-sharp fangs, perfect for ripping apart flesh and breaking bones. He thought back to his kill last night as he bent down, drinking the cool, crisp water out of the stream. Ah, the thrill of the hunt. The elk had no idea that he was there, just feet away. He smiled at the thought of pouncing on his prey, grabbing the elk by his throat as he bit down on its neck, and tearing the bull elk's head clean off. Another howl. Again, the alpha's call. He let out a humph as he rolled into the stream. Ah, a perfect morning hunt, Dale thought, as he reached for his recurve bow and a pack from his Ford F-150 pickup truck. A cool morning, high visibility and low wind, making for an accurate shot with his bow. The theme song from the animated show The Ventures Brothers starts playing on Dale's phone. Dale checks his phone and answers. Hey Matt, uh, what's the word? Ah, uh, hey brother, I just passed the second gate. I'll be there in less than ten minutes, said Matt. Okay, replied Dale. Ah, did you bring all your gear? Matt asked. Ah, uh, yes, everything. My bow, a quiver full of 30 arrows and my 45 caliber pistol, spare clip, flashlight, water, and a couple of granola bars and my compass, answered Dale. A compass? I bet it's that purple one Lisa bought you for Valentine's Day. Uh, sure is, Matt. And Matt chuckled. <laughs> okay, buddy. You know, uh, I have a GPS, right? Well, electronics don't always work, brother. Dale snapped back. Well, how's how's Aaron doing? Dale asked. Ah, we're in the middle of it, man. I'm tired of the fighting, said Matt. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Dale replied. And suddenly, Dale hears a faint howl in the distance. What the hell? What? Matt asks. Ah, never mind. I'll be there in a few. And Dale hangs up his phone and drops it into his pocket. Confused about the how, a coyote, he wonders, maybe. A few minutes passed by, and Dale opened his tailgate and was leaning against it with his bow in hand, waxing the string. Matt pulls up and sees his friend. He puts his pickup in park and says, Hey, brother, as he hops out of his truck. You ready to get this hunt going? The man has been looking forward to this hunt for the past two weeks. Uh, yes, I am, brother, says Dale as he closes his tailgate to his truck. Matt and Dale exchange pleasantries as they both hear another faint howl. And Dale says, uh, Matt, you hear that? I did. Sounds like a coyote. A bit different. Hmm, agreed. It's off. Ah, forget about it, brother. Let's get going. And Dale shrugs his shoulders and grabs his gear. Well, let's do this, brother. Dale says in an excited tone. The two friends start walking up the narrow trail. They're in the middle of nowhere, 
South of them used to be a logging camp. However, it was shut down due to strange sightings and a missing person case. The internet wasn't very helpful in providing information about the story. Madder told Dale he did some research on the area and its surroundings, and all that he told Dale was that the terrain was filled with hills, trees, and big ass rocks. The Matt's research skills were average at best. He was always more of a let's see what happens kind of fellow, which was fine with Dale, as he was just looking to escape from the normal life of a mid class businessman. They both loved the woods and had been haunted many times before. They were both hopeful that this trip would be different from the day to day life that they normally led. Hey, Dale, said Matt. Yo, I understand there's about a mile up the path. See the clearing ahead? Just past that, there was a slight ridge with plenty of tree cover and great sight lines. Ah, sounds good, bro. Let's keep moving. Dale replied. They continued walking towards their makeshift tree stand that they'd fabricated about three days ago. The trees looked over a small valley and with a large meadow and a cluster of trees. A stream ran through the area as well. And when they scattered the area, they saw all sorts of tracks out there, including deer, rabbits, coyotes, a bear, and an elk. Well, the two friends stopped near the base of the tree that held their stand. They just listened for a few minutes, birds chirping and insects moving about. So serene, so peaceful. The two men sat down on some rocks as they leaned their weapons on the tree. Uh, Matt, Dale says, uh, your bow is great. Ah, uh, Yes, sir. Study the art compound bow with all the necessary modifications you could ever need, Matt replies. Uh, that's great, says Dale. Finally got it specked out. Uh, she's a beauty, Matt says. She? Dale questions with a slight smirk. Yeah, bro, she. And the men stare at each other for a moment and let out a good laugh. They remove some snacks from their packs and begin to eat. When the wind blew through his fur as he slowly walks through the trees, he is thinking of his alpha, the old one get him weaker. He won't be leading the pack for much longer. He doesn't have the resentment towards the Alpha. He learned most of what he knows from him. His ears twitch as he hears a sound in a valley to his right. He heard this sound before, but he stops and listens. Suddenly, the unmistakable smell of urine hits his nose. An intruder. This was his territory. Intruders weren't welcome. He pinpoints the smell and heads towards the direction. He slowly is approaching a cluster of trees as movement is catching his attention. Wobbling from side to side, a brown mass is rubbing against one of the trees. He knows this creature. He lets out a slow humph. Encounters with these creatures usually result in a fight. Well, they're slow, not very intelligent, but are strong. He continues approaching the trees. The wind is in his favor. He gets real low to the ground, coming from behind the creature who is oblivious to his presence. He starts to salivate at the thought of tasting the creature's flesh. His eyes narrow. He is within striking distance now. He can feel his claws ripping into the beast. He can't take it anymore, and in a flash, he strikes. With slashing his claws, he cuts through the bear's throat. The warm crimson blood sprays onto the surrounding trees. He can feel the liquid flowing down his claws to his amber-colored eyes, narrowing further as he watches the bear hit the ground. In a blink, he grabs the 700-pound bear by its neck, lifting it into the air and then slamming it to the ground, hard. And he sinks his fangs into the chest of the bear, tearing away a huge bloody chunk of flesh. Fur and blood move through the air. He swallows the flesh and lets out a tremendous roar, confirming his kill. And Dale and Matt jump at the sound of the spine tingling roar. What in the fuck is that? Matt exclaimed, his eyes wide with terror. I have no idea, said Dale, with the same expression upon his face. Well, whatever the fuck it was, it, it was close and I sure as hell don't want to meet it, said Dale, while gripping his bow tightly. I agreed, Matt said, while shaking his head and trying to compose himself. And Dale removes his forty-five caliber pistol from his pack, checked the magazine and chambered around. Dale, I doubt that's going to help, brother. The hell with that cougar in Utah, right? Yeah, but that was a fucking cougar, old Dale. That man was able to compose himself. He reached into his pack, as well as pulling out a sawed-off 12-gauge double-barrel shotgun 
and the ammo belt with slugs. Oh, that's your uncle's old gun, isn't it? said Dale. Yes, he gave it to me on my 32nd birthday. Oh, so now what, brother? All the game at an earshot, at that roar, well, it's going to be gone. Dale said in a frantic tone. The man shook his head. I'm not sure, brother. Let's glass and see what's out there. Maybe there's still some game around. If not, we will leave. Well, it would take us more time if we have to fill dress an animal. Plus a kill will lure in whatever made that roar, Dale exclaimed. And Dale picked up his binoculars and he started scanning the area below. He noticed his movement in a cluster of trees a couple of miles out. Matt, movement in the trees. Well, what is it? I'm trying to focus in. Hang on. And Dale lets out a gasp. What, Dale? What do you see? A grizzly. No way. We have a tag for one grizzly. Matt says with excitement. Oh, there's something off. It's shaking back and forth. Oh, there's a pool of blood underneath it. Oh, what's up about that, dude? The bear made his kill. That's why we haven't seen anything, Dale. Matt huffed. Fucking bear. No, Dale remarked. His face turned pale. His eyes widened, filling with tears. And he says, The Grizz. What's the one that's been killed? The man is confused. His friend is clearly terrified, but he has to be mistaken. The man snatches the binoculars from Dale's shaking hands and presses his eyes against the binoculars, focusing in on the cluster of trees. And then he sees it. A giant black mass ripping pieces of flesh from the mangled corpse of what used to be a 700-pound grizzly bear. What the fuck? Dale pulls the binoculars from Matt's hand, and in a frantic whisper says, Matt, what in the fucking hell is going on? Eh, calm down, Dale. It's just a cougar. I know him full well. A cougar stood no chance of taking down a bear of that size. Not to mention, he's never seen a black cougar. Matt grabs his own binoculars from the pouch of his belt. The two men stare through their respective lenses at the horrific sight. Slopping rips, warm liquid, the sweet marrow from the broken bones. His pleasure was something to be treasured. He's encountered these creatures before and feasted upon them. This beast holds a lot of flesh, too much for him to eat alone. He knew his pack would eventually smell the kill and investigate. However, that wouldn't be until the sky is dark. And as he sits back in a crouching position, catches a savory smell on the wind. He smelt it before from his prey. He licked his bloodied chops and took in a deep breath in through his nose. Ah, so sweet. He took another. Where was that delicious smell emanating from? And Matt and Dale stare in horror at the huge wolf-like creature through the binoculars. A big broad chest, strong abdominal muscles pulsing as the beast took in a long breath. Blood was covering its snout and parts of its face. Deep amber eyes, pointed ears and dark black fur like a midnight sky. Matt and Dale whisper, What the fuck, dude? That's a goddamn werewolf. No, Dale. I know what it is. It's called a dogman. I've heard stories about them on YouTube videos. I never would have imagined seeing one, though. Or that he even existed, for that matter. Matt said, clearly, in disbelief. No fucking way, Matt. No way. Just then, the dogman stood up on two legs, turning his huge head from side to side. The two men stared in horror at the sight of the blood-covered beast. Oh, shit! Matt exclaimed. He dropped the binoculars. Did you see that? That fucker just looked right at us. Oh, Matt, there's no way he could see us from this far. He'd have to have go-go gadget eyes. We're miles away. How about the fact that it just stood up on two fucking legs? Well, the two men looked at each other in terror. Both men looked through their binoculars again. What the hell? Both men exclaimed. It, it, it's gone! Man exclaimed as they stared horrified at the bloody corpse of the once powerful grizzly bear. Ah, the smell was close. He continued sniffing the air. He stood on his hind legs, reaching his full nine-foot height and turning his head from side to side, trying to pinpoint where the smell was emanating from. His ears turning ever so slightly, trying to pick up any sound at all. He took a huge breath in through his nose. There it is. 
and he snapped his head in the direction of the captivating smell. He pushed off the ground beneath his feet and headed towards the ridge above him, bounding over boulders and moving past trees in a flash. He was getting excited as he knew the smell well. Fear. He smiled at the thought as he closed in. He got low to the ground as he crept through the bushes, and he continued to sniff the air and listen intensely. Where is it? There. The tree, not forty feet in front of him. He wanted to investigate, but his experience as an apex predator made him think better. He waited patiently. The sun began falling from the sky. He suddenly movement high in the tree, and he observed curiosity. Sasquatch? He thought. No, these creatures were too small to be Sasquatch. They had green and brown fur covering their bodies everywhere except their faces. Sticks with vines tied to either end. He knew these sticks. He'd seen them before. He cocked his head to the side when he saw a shiny stick in one man's hand as he was descending the tree. He knew this object. It made a loud sound and sprayed fire. He let out a low growl at the sight. And the one man looked in his direction. He wasn't concerned as he was well hidden. The two creatures were communicating with each other. He tilted his head slowly, flicking his ears. Again, he smelt it. Fear. Oh, it was radiating off of them. He controlled the urge to spring forth and consume their flesh. He waited and studied his prey further. He followed the two creatures away from the tree, only moving when they moved and keeping his distance. The two creatures kept turning their heads, scanning their surroundings. He moved silently from one tree to another, closing the distance. One of the creatures stops and points in his direction. His amber eyes narrowed. Did they see him? Were they aware that they were being stalked? He crouched down. He could see the men looking in his direction, communicating. Wait. Is. What? One of them is coming towards him. He could sense the creature's fear. A howl rose from deep in the forest, and the man froze, backed up towards the other. He could sense that terror. He recognized the howl. It was a member of his pack, his brother. He must have smelled the blood and flesh of the beast had killed earlier. Ah, he could have it. These two creatures, though, well, they were his. Dale, let's fucking go, screamed Matt. I don't want to meet whatever made that howl. Matt, I saw something in the trees. It's following us. Dale said we're pointing in the direction of the dogman. It doesn't fucking matter, dude. Let's move now. I have a bad feeling. We need to go. Dale looked at his friend. Matt was clearly afraid, as was Dale. They heard a growl earlier, but it was low, but they had heard it. There had been an eerie silence in the forest around them as they head towards their trucks. And Dale finally agreed. Okay, brother. Let's move. Dale and Matt continued moving in the direction of their trucks. Dale swore he could see movement in the trees. However, Matt had tunnel vision. He was focused on getting to the trucks. Matt had the urge to urinate ever since the sighting of the bear. Oh, it was unbearable. Dale, I need to piss. Hold up. Matt, are you out of your mind? Whatever made that sound could be closing in on us, replied Dale. And suddenly, Matt sees a dark shape crouching within the trees. Matt squints, and he realizes they are eyes. Deep, piercing, amber-colored eyes. Dale! Dale! Matt says in a shaking tone. What? Look! Whispers Matt. Where? It what? Look! Look! There! Right there! Dale sees what Matt is looking at, and he can't believe it. His dad a Yes, Dale. I, I fucking told you. What do we do, Matt? We get the fuck out of here now. And Dale lets off a shot with his forty-five towards the shape. The two men turn and run. They couldn't believe what they just saw. It was a fucking dogman. Now, they knew they couldn't outrun the beast, but they were going to try. Only about a hundred feet to the truck, screamed Dale. Let's go, Matt! The two men were running as fast as their legs could carry them. 
Matt, run to my truck. It's unlocked. Dow screamed at Matt. The two men approached the respected doors of Dale's pickup. And just as Dale touched the driver's side door handle, a deep, menacing roar comes from behind them. The roar shakes Dale's core. And Matt's already in the truck and tells Dale, Let's go! Trees burst into splinters. Wood and dirt fly through the sky hitting the truck. And Dale fumbles into the driver's seat and slams the door. Matt pulls his friend's jacket. And Dale looks at Matt, tears flowing from his eyes. Dale looks in front of the truck. And there it is. Nine-foot monster. Broad, wolf-like head with a long snout. Sharp teeth barren from its maw. Claws the size of steak knives at the end of its long fingers, and strong arms leading to a muscled chest down to a slender toned abdomen, and big, strong canine legs. His amber eyes pierced their very souls. He stared at the two creatures inside the machine. He had seen these machines before, when they were destroying his home. Humans! Oh, how he despises these creatures. He remembered his pack setting upon the intruding humans that cut down their home. His pack was close, but the humans were able to escape. Not all of them, though. The pack was able to separate one as he ran into the forest. The dogman was just a pup then, when he watched as his father ripped the human in half. He glared deep into each human's eyes before him. He let out a deep, guttural growl and he could hear the humans yelling frantically inside the machine. Oh, the fear coming off of them, it was delightful, pouring into the air. He took a step forward. They were screaming louder. The machine came alive, and he burst forward, leaping onto the hood of the machine. As he punched through the windshield, he slashed at the humans. He felt his claws scrape into one human's flesh. The machine started to move backwards. It didn't get far as it hit the front of another machine behind it, and suddenly he felt a searing hot pain in his shoulder. He roared in anger. The two humans grabbed their ears. Dale, go, 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 punch it! Matt screams as he fumbles with his double barrel, trying to reload. He just blasted a slug into the beast's shoulder. The roaring let out, and it was deafening. The dogman had scraped Matt's chest with his razor-sharp claws. Boom! Another slug flew past the dogman's head. He snarled at Matt. The huge clawed hand came crashing through the windshield, grabbing the shotgun from Matt's hands. Dale slammed on the accelerator as he turned the wheel hard to the right. Rocks and dirt flew through the air as the tires fought for a grip. The beast tumbled from the truck, slamming its head into the hard ground, and it groaned in pain. The two men are speeding through the darkening path of the forest. Are you all right? They all yelled to Matt. No, dude, I'm not all right. What in the fuck is going on? That fucking beast is trying to kill us. Matt frantically yelled. Eh, no shit. They all screamed back. And they all skids around the bent. Look out! And Matt screams in terror. He is fueled with rage. That human shot at him. His shoulder burned. He was dazed from hitting his head off the hard ground. Ah, oh, he was pissed off. He rose to all fours, shaking his head as he composed himself. Well, the humans won't get far. He burst through the trees, and he could see the truck sliding around the turns. He was gaining ground, almost in range. He inhaled deeply as he dug his claws into the earth beneath him, and he lunged through the bushes as the machine was turning around the sharp bend. Ah, oh, he timed it perfectly. His shoulder impacted the driver's side door of the machine. The force blew the small bushes and rocks through the air. The truck tumbled violently down the hillside, smashing into trees as it rolled. He leapt down the hill following the banged up machine, stopping at the top of the boulder in between the two giant trees, and watching the broken machine come to a stop against the tree. And the sunlight, it was fading fast, especially now under the canopy of the trees, his amber eyes sharply watching for any movements inside of the truck, and flicking his ears from side to side, listening for any sound, he heard a faint thumping sounds, two heartbeats, and he focused in. The two creatures breathing 
where I was streamed as well. The smell of blood tickled his nostrils. Now he will patiently wait for his prey to emerge from the now useless machine. The daytime sun had sunk back behind the horizon. The black of night has come. The moon shined bright and high in the sky. The forest where it was quiet, except for the occasional hoot from an owl or a chirp of a cricket in the distance. And the moonlight shined in on Matt through the demolished driver's side door. He started to come too, and he slowly opened his eyes, blinking rapidly. Finally, he fully came to, and it hurt to breathe. He has pressure on his arm as it's trapped. Fuck, Matt whispers. He fills his chest and coughs as he breathes. His sides hurt, possibly a broken rib. He looks at his left arm caught under the seat. Oh, he was able to wriggle his arm free as he removed his arm to let out another groan. He sees Dale's forty-five caliber pistol and grabs it, and then he reaches into his pocket, pulling out his flashlight. Matt turned on the flashlight and scans the inside of the truck cab. He sees Dale laying unconscious behind the seats. Ah, uh, Dale! Fuck, man! Dale, are you alright? Can you hear me? Dale! Dale was severely injured. Blood was oozing from his forehead, nose and ears. A huge gash across his left arm with his forearm poking through the skin. Lord only knows what internal injuries Dale has sustained. Hang in there, said Matt to his unconscious friend. And Matt needed to get Dale to safety. He needed to get them out of the destroyed truck. Matt quickly did an inventory check. He had Dale's forty-five with a clip inside. He ejected the clip and inspected the ammunition. Six rounds. He loaded the magazine and chambered another round. Matt saw Dale's pack. He quickly grabbed it and removed the spare clip with eight rounds. Matt counted. Matt continued to remove items from Dale's pack. A flashlight, a hunting knife with a ten-inch blade, and Dale's compass. He then checked his own pack and removed his truck keys. Tactical knife with a 12-inch blade he had purchased from Amazon not three days ago. Some water and a granola bar. He then used the knife to cut a rag into strips. He broke four Dale's wooden arrows and placed them on either side of Dale's arm. Then he used the water-soaked strip to cover the bone protruding from Dale's forearm. Ah, good thing you're unconscious for this, brother. It's gonna hurt, Matt said. As gently as he could, Matt did his best to set Dale's arm. Using the arrows and rag strips, he fashioned a makeshift splint. Then he covered Dale with his jacket and placed a water bottle on Dale's knife next to Dale. Okay, brother. I'm gonna go get my truck and get us the hell out of this horror show. Stay here and don't move. Matt said sarcastically to his unconscious friend. And Matt slowly and cautiously exited the damaged truck, and scanning his surroundings with his flashlight and gripping a forty five handgun. Okay, jackass. Your truck isn't going to teleport here. Let's go. It's just a dogman. A huge, ferocious, nine-foot-tall dogman. Yeah, you'll be fine. Oh, fuck. Matt mutters to himself. The man looks around and saw the trail of destruction the tumbling truck had caused. He checked the compass and aimed it northwest. And he began ascending a hill towards the direction of his vehicle. Mmm, movement in the truck. He smiled, showing his toothy grin. He was happy the humans weren't dead. He wanted the pleasure of killing them himself. He suddenly moved from the boulder he was crouching on, slowly making his way towards the truck. He wanted to investigate. It lay down facing the side of the truck he charged into. Peering into it, he could see one of the humans gathering some items. He sensed the panic. He saw the other human was unconscious and with blood coming from his face. Mmm, he licked his chops at the sight. He watched the human start to move out of the machine and he laid perfectly still, being as silent as possible. The human shined a light into the forest around him slowly, scanning his surroundings. Then the human started to walk towards the debris trail. He watched him until he was out of sight. Then he slowly started creeping towards the machine sniffing the air, the smell of blood filling his nose. He reached the machine and stuck his head inside, sniffing around the inside of the truck's cab. 
but he slowly moved further inside. Lani touched his nose to the unconscious man's face and sniffed again. Mmm, the sweet smell of blood. The human's chest slowly rises and then gently falls. But the creature isn't dead. Yet. Come on, dude. Almost there. Matt says as he stops to catch his breath. Almost there. And Matt continues to jog towards his truck. The forest is silent around him. Everything seems still. Matt thinks of his friend passed out in his demolished vehicle. He has to get his truck and back to Dale. And Matt turns the bend and he sees his pickup and continues to jog towards it, quickening his step. Matt reaches out to pull the handle with the driver's side door and suddenly a blur of brown fur crashes into him, sending him hard into the ground. In a daze, Matt sees it. A brown wolf-like creature with red eyes standing over him, snarling, teeth bared, drool dripping from its maw. Oh shit! Matt exhales, scrambling backwards. Another one! Fuck! The brown dogman narrows its eyes. It lets out a challenging roar as it moves towards Matt for a finishing blow. Matt raises the 45. Crack! Crack! Two shots hit the beast in the upper chest. The dogman roars out in pain as he stumbles backwards. Matt scrambles to his feet and takes aim at the huge beast before him. The dogman charges Matt, his mouth wide. Matt sees all of its blood-stained fangs roaring. Crack! 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 Click! 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 Matt squeezes the trigger repeatedly as he screams out, Ah! One bullet grazes the beast's upper snout as the other three bullets fly through the dogman's mouth and out the back of its skull. Blood, bone and brain matter following the bullets through the air. The dogman hits the ground in front of Matt's feet with a solid thump. Matt lowers the smoking forty-five, shaking in his trembling hand. Looking at the beast before him in terror and shock, he'd killed it. He couldn't believe it, but he'd actually killed it. He looked at the forty-five in his hand, the last bit of smoke now leaving the barrel. The slide locked in and drawn back in position. Matt pulled himself together as he inspected the monster before him. Now, this one was smaller than the other, about seven feet tall. A bigger chest and legs, more like a stocky UFC fighter, and with a shiny brown coat now stained red. Matt ejects the spent magazine from the pistol and loaded the spare, and he chambers around. Matt pulls his key from his pocket as he stepped around the deceased dogman. A loud, terrifying howl rang out from the direction of their makeshift tree stand. Oh, fuck! Matt thought. More of them! I have to get Dale! Matt jumps into his truck as he heard the more terrifying howls coming from the forest. He starts his pickup, turns around, and starts to head back towards his friend. Hmm, he'd heard the shots ring out, the roar of his kin, the howls of his alpha and the other members of his pack. He looks at a human, unconscious on the ground before him. He will feast, but he needs to investigate the commotion. It only took him a few leaps to make it up the hill, where he could smell the blood in the air. It wasn't human blood. It was his kind. One of his pack was in trouble. He flew through the brush and he heard another machine heading this way. He peered through the trees and it was the other human heading back to the demolished truck and the unconscious human he had pulled from the wreckage. He let out another low growl and they continued following the scent of blood. But he was strong now. He could smell a familiar scent. He crashes through the bushes and finds his brother laying lifeless on the forest floor. He could smell the scent of the other human. It had killed his brother. Rage filled him. He threw back his head and let out another roar. He was pissed. He pushed off the ground, leaping through the air and bounding through the woods, moving as fast as he could, trying to catch the human that killed his kin. The thought of pulling the human spine from its body, consuming his flesh, well, it was all that he could think of. The rage building. The human, there it is. He bowed towards the human, Matt heard something like an avalanche coming towards him through the forest. Oh shit! Matt sees the dogman gaining ground on him. 
Man pulls the pistol just as the monstrous dogman smashes into him. He crashed into the human. And as he wrapped his claws around him, Matt pulled the trigger. The dogman growled in anger as the bullet grazed his side, and they rolled down the hill. Matt crashed into a tree, his breath flying from his lungs. The dogman crashed into a boulder. A painful <coughs> escaped him. And Matt groaned in pain as he tried to gain his feet. He coughed and he spat out a glob of blood. He leaned against the tree as he caught his breath. Matt looked to his left in time to see the great beast stand to all fours. The dogman let out a low growl as he fixed his gaze on Matt. He stood to his full height, his chest expanding and collapsing as he breathed. He growled in a challenge. And Matt was terrified. He couldn't show it though. He puffed his chest out and screamed a war cry. Rawr! The dogman pushed off the stone and in a blink he was in Matt's face, teeth bared. Matt pulled his knife. The dogman grabbed Matt by his neck as he let out a deep guttural growl. And as he opened his maw, he stared deep into Matt's eyes. Matt could see his reflection in the beast's eyes. Matt moved as fast as he could, raising the knife. And at the corner of his eye, the dogman saw the glint of the knife. He quickly slashed with his razor-sharp claws, and Matt screamed in pain as the knife and his hand fell to the forest floor. Tears filled Matt's eyes as blood poured from the stump. The dogman growled as he squeezed his clawed hand tighter around Matt's neck. Thwomp! Matt gasps as he sees an arrowhead protruding from the dogman's skull. The dogman's eyes roll back into its head. His grip around Matt's neck slowly releases. Thump! The great beast falls face first into the ground. Matt drops to his feet. He looks up to see Dale standing twenty feet away, holding Matt's compound bow in his hands. Dale exhales and smiles at his friend. Matt smiles back as he reaches into his pocket for a bandana and starts wrapping his wrist. Dale starts to move towards his friend. And Matt's eyes open wide. Dale! Matt screams. A huge clawed hand wraps around Dale's head. Dale screams in agony as he is lifted from his feet. His screams intensify as his skull begins to crack. Matt cries out as he watches Dale's skull cave in beneath the force of the massive clawed hand. A monstrous grey and red dogman steps out in the shadows, almost eleven feet tall, a huge barrel chest. A body much like a bodybuilder with six-inch claws, scars covering his chest and piercing amber eyes glowing. A deep, guttable growl came from its giant maw. The Alpha. My God! Matt said as the Alpha Dogman steps forward. And as he did, he threw Dale's lifeless corpse to Matt's feet. The growl shook Matt's core. Matt looked down at Dale's body. His eyes bulged out from their broken sockets, blood and brain leaking from his skull. Matt looked up at the Alpha. The Alpha glared back at Matt as it snarled showing its long curved fangs. He took a giant step towards Matt, and multiple sets of glowing eyes pierced the darkness. Matt knew that this was the end. There was nowhere to run, no way to defend himself. The dogman started to yip and growl in anticipation of the kill. The glowing eyes moved in closer, and Matt could see the forms taking shape. And they moved in closer and closer. The Alpha moved in a flash, and Matt felt nothing. The last registering sight was the dogman ripping his and Dale's body apart as they consumed their flesh. And then white nothingness. The Alpha let out a bellowing howl, and the rest of the pack joined in. This was a warning call. Stay away. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. Chest pounding, nail biting, and flesh tearing action from the brand new author to the channel and the incredible mind of Silent Urge 6. A mighty thank you to your Silent for penning this incredible story. Quite possibly one of the best Dogman stories of 2023 so far. And I wait with bated breath in anticipation for your next edition. 
And as ever, I hope you enjoy this rendition and I hope that life is treating you well. Well, guys and girls as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. Now, if you think you can pen a story with this much punch, then please do get in touch with me at the contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. Now, I hope you're all well and happy, family and friends alike and are starting to enjoy the warmer weather and beautiful sunshine. But as ever guys, remember, be safe, not 